Billistine, Billistine, however you want to call it. These shocks were custom length and this is how you find it. That actually took me a while to find because I'm a little slow on the Google researching. Anyways, um, I measured this at about 19 inches from this hole here to where I'm mounting the bottom half of this shock. So this is gonna go up through the hole and this will mount into a stud. Let me show you that really quick. So this truss actually came with a little mounting spot for your shock to go and it's meant to mount in between this hole and another hole that's way back here but because i moved these shock mounts backwards three inches they actually cover the hole the shock is supposed to go into so now i'm wondering how do i mount the lower half of my shock and i think i've come up with a solution for just that here's all the parts that came with the shock that i bought and this parts list shows that it has two sleeves which push into that lower mounting hole um, but it says that they're both 17 by 12 by 35 millimeters um, clearly they're two different sizes so I took these two sleeves that go in there and I went to the hardware store and I matched it up with um, a bolt I went with a bigger one since it is going to be a stud that comes out of the truss and a half inch bolt seems to fit perfect so now all I need to do is to make sure this bolt fits in the hole on the truss and cut the head of this off so I can put this in the hole and weld it up. It looks like I chose right because this half inch bolt fits in that hole. That means Barnes intended for everyone to use a half inch bolt or stud to mount their shocks to the truss. These parts here are just for the top of the shock and we'll get into that a little later. Now just to test to make sure um, how long I want to cut this bolt, I've gone ahead and installed this insert into the end and I'll put this bolt through and we're going to put the lock nut that I bought on the end of this, tighten it up with a little bit sticking out and then we'll measure where we need to cut this off so that we can weld this part onto the truss. In case you're wondering, half inch bolts usually almost always in fact have three quarter inch heads and three quarter inch nuts on the end. So once I have that where I like it I'm gonna take my marker and mark where this bolt is gonna line up with the end of that bracket. Once we have that information we can measure from the hole that we have on the back of this bracket um, to where I want to weld it which is all the way to the axle tube on the end there. And so we've got about three inches. We have that mark that we made earlier. I'm gonna measure out three inches from there. Luckily, I bought a long enough bolt and I only have to cut off about uh, five eighths of an inch. We clean up this end after we cut it off so that it's easy to stick in the hole and we'll get it all tacked together. We'll slide right into this hole with a little persuasion. That's a good fit. Just to test to make sure we have this the correct length, I'm going to grab this shock here. Go ahead and stick the end on. Make sure there's enough threads sticking out to grab with the, uh, the nut. You could tell already that this is a pretty long shock. This is their. Uh, post style 12, 12 inch travel shock. Um, it actually goes to about 11 and 3 quarter. Um, but when you look up their website, um, you can find all the lengths and find a shock that's perfect for you. All right, let's pretend that this is the top of our post style shock. And so you wanna take your parts from the parts kit and put this piece on first with the concave side facing upward. And then this rubber piece, you would think that this little indent or outdent or whatever you'd call that would face toward that because they kind of fit together. However, that piece that sticks out right there is designed to hold the top post of the shock in that hole. Um, 
because when you sandwich your hole between these two rubber pieces or rubber bushings, um, those two smaller little um, buttons on the inside will smash against each other um, inside the hole and then the rubber bushings is what actually grips and holds the sheet metal. Once you have that on, um, this little plate goes on opposite with a concave facing toward the rubber and then you just simply put your bolt on and bolt it all together. Little plate flying saucer deal with the concave side facing up. Then I'll put this bushing with this part facing up. And now we're ready to collapse the shock and shove it up through the hole. Okay. This next part would be really, really hard if you've got all of your stock uh, Jeep Comanche or Jeep Cherokee stuff that's still in here. Because usually there would be a coolant tank here, a um, bunch of wiring, then you have uh, on your later models you'd have like relays and electrical stuff. Um, but if you have your engine bay completely empty, then, uh, then you're just fine. Trust me, if you've got everything in under the hood on a Jeep Comanche or Jeep Cherokee, the driver's side is the really difficult side. So. I like to tighten shocks down till I see a little bit of squish in the bushing. Well, I can see it starting to squish, and so I know it's grabbing onto the sheet metal. And I go a little bit more, and that should do it. If you're doing a lift for a Jeep Comanche or Jeep Cherokee, I recommend going to that website and looking up exactly what size you want instead of just putting in your make and model because a lot of companies will not do the research and find out the exact shock you need. You'll end up not getting as much travel as you could. Well, that was really dumb of me. I almost bent my shock, and I'm realizing now that um, the old jack that I have is just way too short, and it's not safe. So I actually spent some money and went and got this Badlands jack from Harbor Freight. Man, it is like way taller. It goes up to 29 and a half inches or something. So starting fresh. I've got this flexed out exactly how I want it which is about 12 inches, 11 or 12 inches of articulation in the front. And if you come over here, you see what I did was um, collapse this shock and fully extend this shock. I also took the boots and moved them all the way up the tube so that I can see the shock shaft later on when I flex this thing out to check all the clearances. So, um, now all I have to do is hold these up to the axle and to the frame, or the frame, and um, see if I have clearance. Now it's just a matter of holding this at a certain point and finding out um, where I can put that bolt and uh, also not touch the frame right here because that would be really bad. I'd have bent shocks all the time. So. Um, I think I've got it figured out. This one will articulate about an inch less than this on this side. And it won't hit the frame right here. And I don't have to move this uh, upper mount hole. Then when you go to this side and you put the both ends of the shock in the same spot that you just talked about. And because this shock is extended one inch, um, it lines up perfectly with where I plan to put that bolt. So I think I figured out my new mounting location, which is only an inch off of the original spot. All right, so this is about as much travel as I'm gonna get out of this before I run into clearance issues with the shocks. It ended up being um, a little less than 10 inches of articulation, which looks a 
lot more than um, I thought it would. Um, so now I bought these um, double shear uh, limit strap brackets. Weld these on the side that is fully drooped and make sure that they're facing each other. I'll write down the distance between the eyelets on the top and the bottom and we'll limit our suspension droop right there. As far as shocks go, the next time that I measure for them, I'm going to think about where they're mounted on the top and the bottom and uh, whether it's whether they're going to hit the frame or not. So all my clearances are good. I've limited my up travel. I'm about to limit my down travel and we can move on to the next project. Don't forget if you like my video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so YouTube can tell you next week when I come out with another video. Who welded this? <laughs>